It's December 24th, and that means the time for gift giving is nearly upon us. We've got less than 24 hours till it happens. And today on 25 Drinks of Christmas, we're going to go ahead and make a cocktail that embraces the heritage of some of that gift giving spirit. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. Welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. 25 Drinks of Christmas, day 24 of 25. That's pretty fucking wild. <laughs> uh, today we're gonna go ahead and make uh, what is essentially a variation on a uh, Brandy Alexander that I call the White Elephant, hearkening to a gift-giving tradition that is popular, at the very least here in the Midwest, but maybe not elsewhere, so let me tell you a little bit about it, I guess. So a White Elephant is a gift event where a group of people collectively agree to buy a gift up to a certain price point, usually like 10, 15, 20 bucks, something cheap and stupid and silly and frivolous to just give away for the sake of having an event around the idea of gift giving. Everybody shows up, you put the gift like in a pile in the center of everybody, everybody else sits in a circle, and, you know, everybody goes up, grabs a random one that isn't theirs, they pass it left and right and across a bunch, and then by the end of it, you have ideally somebody else's 10, 15, $20 gift to open up and enjoy and sort of kind of collectively be thankful for. I wanted to make a cocktail that stuck with the white elephant theme and adhered to the color in its name, white. So we are going to do a colorless variation on a Brandy Alexander with some really weird flavors in it. You're gonna need everything that you see in front of you. Uh, you're going to start with uh, a pear eau de vie. Now an eau de vie is a brandy made from uh, a distillate of fruit, usually. So in this case, this is a pear eau de vie. This is not a pear flavored brandy. This is not a pear liqueur. This is not pear anything but the distillate of pear. And what you'll find is that that produces a very rounded, realistic, and complex flavor that you're not gonna get in other products. Here's an alternative. Absolute, the vodka company, makes a pear-flavored vodka. When I first started building this drink, I was using this. It does have a very similar Bartlett pear flavor, but it's a lot more, I would describe neon. Very just one note, solid, pear, artificial flavoring. It'll work, it will not be as good, and this has been on the shelf since late October, early November, and I still have it. So this isn't gonna leave your shelf any faster than that is. So do yourself a favor and just get this. You'll also need uh, a ginger liqueur. There's a couple of them out there. Uh, Arrow, the really like low shelf stuff, makes a ginger schnapps. That would technically work, but it would also be gross. So uh, I would recommend Domaine du Canton, which is a French uh, ginger liqueur. It's really good, it's sweet and spicy. Like ginger, it's, it's functional, it'll get the job done. You'll also need some heavy cream. Uh, this is heavy whipping cream. The difference between heavy cream and heavy whipping cream is the addition of stabilizers. It's not relevant. Just get what you can find, as long as it's heavy cream, it'll be fine. Uh, some lemon bitters and uh, simple syrup. Make your own. I just ran out and didn't have time to make more, so I bought some. It's not shelf stable, uh, and it's mass produced, and it's probably got preservatives and stuff in it, so it's not as good as homemade stuff, but at the very least, it's a simple syrup. Let's go ahead and get started. Randy Alexander and a white elephant as well are shaken cocktails, so we're gonna go ahead and pull up our shaker here and start with our bitters. Less readily available to get into than I thought it would be. Hold on. I had to cut the shit open. Fee Brothers, fix your shit. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and do uh, two dashes of this into the bottom of the shaker. And then next up, we're going to do uh, an ounce and a half of our pear eau de vie. Next, we're going to need an ounce of our Domaine de Canton. And I can't tell by the difficulty I'm having opening this. Make sure to clean off the, the spouts of your bottles or else things like this happen and you've got to really crank them open. We're gonna do a full ounce of that. Next up, we're gonna need half an ounce of simple syrup. You could also use a honey syrup here that complements the flavors pretty well. Um, that would work just as fine, but uh, I'm gonna go with just a regular simple today. And then lastly, you're going to need uh, a full ounce of your heavy cream. We're gonna go ahead and start off by dry shaking this to froth up and incorporate that cream just for a couple seconds to get things combined. We'll add some ice and give it another shake. We're sticking with our one cracked, one whole philosophy here. Put that back together, give it a nice wet shake for 12 to 15 seconds. Boom. And we're gonna serve this up in a coupe glass. And you're gonna wanna double strain this to keep any ice shards from sitting underneath the uh, head of foam this will create because we've shaken up that cream. 
Um, and the last thing I want to do is dilute cream with ice. It's just bad. Now, to finish that off, we're going to go with a pretty kind of old school um, garnish with just some ground nutmeg sprinkled over top. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a white elephant. Let's give it a taste. It is delightfully weird. <laughs> Everything about this cocktail defies your expectation because you see like a nutmeg garnish over the top of a drink and you think, oh, okay, could be old school, probably, you know, um, a dark liquor, uh, probably something desserty, probably chocolate. Hell, you could look at this and think, oh, that could be a Brandy Alexander just with a very lightly colored brandy that isn't adding any color. And think, oh, cool, a Brandy Alexander. And then as you lift it to your face, you get this whiff of like strong nutmeg, but then underneath that you're like, wait a minute, that's fruit. <laughs> and then on the sip, it just, it washes all of your palate with this cool, very crisp, fresh tasting pear. And, and this kind of, at first is like this, this light, this light little twinge of, uh, of ginger right at the front. And then it kind of smooths out and that kind of, that kind of spiciness kind of goes away and you get this ginger sweetness and, and the flavor of the pear. The, the lemon is presenting as a sort of acid uh, from the bitters. And, and, and it's just, it's just weird because it's also super creamy smooth. It is, it is just off the walls odd. <laughs> and in the best way possible, I mean that because a lot of weird drinks are good. There's some really weird drinks out there that are great. Like uh, the Skater on Acid, which we did a variation of, the uh, Christmas in the Sand. That is, in my opinion, kind of a weird drink, but it works. It is not to everyone's palate, for sure. It reads kind of like um, like a sort of like an apple cream tort or something along those lines, like a like an apple-y dessert. It, it wants to be fresh fruit and it's not. And it's, it's, it's experientially distinct from just about everything else I have ever made. But despite that kind of oddness, there's this satisfying sort of rolling complexity to it where you get that note of ginger up front and it cools out because the pear comes in and you get that kind of that lemon and pear, you know, kind of citric notes coming through and the ginger kind of comes back part way. Drink sort of presents itself across time. It has an evolution to it and it's, it's tasty. It's, it's weird. And, and part of your brain is thinking, this is kind of wrong and kind of gross, but then your your taste buds are telling you, no, it's delicious, sweet fruit. And and you kind of go back and forth for a second, and then you're like, man, no, this is good. It's, it's just odd. It's so odd. Eclectic, if you will. Eccentric. Distinct. Synonyms. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's really good. It really is good. Um, it, it's, it's odd. There's a sort of note coming out of these flavors that I'm having a hard time pinning down. Um, it, it tastes like something. It's, it's kind of candy-like. It's not like a Jolly Rancher candy-like though. Um, it's, it's not like apple. It's not like something like another distinguishable thing, but it's like a very specific product. I can't think of what it is. So if you make this at home, tell me what you think that flavor note is, because it feels like it's evolving into something. And I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the comments. Aside from my ramblings, that is day 24 of 25 Drinks of Christmas with the very uh, odd and yet still very pretty white elephant. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy your Christmas Eve and Christmas vacations. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the final episode of 25 Drinks of Christmas. Be sure to subscribe and like to catch the next one. And I will see you all there. Have a great night. Goodbye.